Hello everyone, VJLZ32 back again with another edition of What's on Kickstarter. I'm going to split the Kickstarter and What's on Duck to do things because there's a lot going on on both sides. Let's get on to Kickstarter first in this video. Let's see what, first of all, let's look at ongoing projects that I've already showed you before. The official Attilio Gambadonti playing cards, which is kind of a strange name, by Tom Secret Press is funded 24 hours to go. Whoop de doo. <laughs> Black Trauma Point Cards by Tenshu's Factory has funded 20 days ago. Not a fan. I, I dislike how they say, you know, this is for magicians and blah blah blah. But then they don't have actual proper standard suits or pips. And the color scheme just doesn't really work. I don't think a magician would use that deck. Gorilla, the Bicycle Gorilla Silverback. A Distant by Albino Dragon is 89% funded, 5 days to go. It will fund it just a matter of time, I'm sure. Choco versus Poker Point Cards by Rana Mahmood is funded, 7 days to go. I would not support that or trust that because it's such a small goal. I just don't have faith in it. Bad Girl Artwork Sketch Poker Deck Volume 7 by Red Pill Publishing and Everett. Heart so is funded three days to go again very low goal that you see there the green with the chick is the back design that's horrible one way back design just not a fan bicycle girl falcon playing cards by collectible playing cards is funded well funded actually for a change with 14 days to go it's one that i will look at getting later on symphony of life sun and moon editions by christopher is funded five days to go. Personally, I would prefer him to get his previous deck out first before asking for more money for this one. But that's just me. Um, but they're pretty nice looking and I may try to get them later on. Aesthetic Point Cards by Tyler Arca is horrible. That's the back design you see there with the standard faces. Just a horrible back design. Took him hours apparently to create that. You should probably put a little more effort into it. Case in point, he's only got $70 pledged out of uh, about a $100 goal, or just over $100 goal, $120, whatever it is. 17 days to go, 56% funded. That's horrible. You can't even get 100 bucks in funding. That's when you know your debt is crap. <laughs> uh, Intaglio uh, engraved apothecary cards. But Alexander Chin is very well funded. 56 hours to go. Time is running out. It's almost $100,000 US. Will it hit $100,000 US? We'll find out, I guess. Um, in the next couple of days, it may. Probably will. However, it might be difficult considering how much they've already sold and how sold out they are. The main deck in this project, which is this one, which is the... Uh, What was it called? The Elixir is already sold out. It sold out very quickly. There's also the Emerald Insights, which is a Kickstarter exclusive, which is a new print of the, uh, right here, of the previous Emerald deck with green gilding and a beautiful tuck case. Um, Apparently an aristocrat stock and magic finish, that's interesting. And then there's this new one they added, which was inspired by the backers, the crowdfunded edition. It's called the Midnight Alexa. Interesting white tuck case, but the cards are actually black with hints of blue. Of course, black faces. Very nice. I like it. It's basically, it's a, more or less a black version of the main deck in this project, the gold elixir. Beautiful decks, 100% worth checking out. So make sure you do before you miss out because time is running out. Right now you can only get the Midnight or the Emerald decks. The other one, the Gold Elixir, like I said, sold out. Um, then we got this weird thing, Little Dictator the Card Game. But Little Dictator Card Game. I always trust creators with names like that, where their creator name is just their project name, basically. 
It's only 1% funded 19 days ago. Not a chance in hell it's going to fund it this way, in my opinion. It's, it's, it's got, you know, playing card faces, as you can see there with the Ace of Hearts and Queen of Hearts, I think that is. Funny enough, Queen of Hearts is Putin in a dress. And Ace of Hearts is Donald Trump as a baby, which really he is kind of just a baby, a whiny baby. Um, it's a deck of cards. There's a bunch of other cards, 30 pieces of art. It says... Uh, the back design is a one-way back design you kind of see there. Um, it's just not great. The corner is not going to be great. It's not going to fund. Magnum Force Playing Cards by Ford's Arts is funded 14 days ago. Looks like a interesting deck of cards. Joker and Thief uh, Second Edition Playing Cards by Joker and the Thief in the red, white, and blue is funded 14 days ago. These ones are going to be printed by the USBC as opposed to Expert, which did the previous decks. Caribbean Wind Playing Cards by SVI Group is funded 32 days ago. It's a very long project campaign. Um, they look pretty nice, and they must have hit the stretch goal for the third deck by now. I'll have to double check that. Um, and probably the nicest decks I've seen from them thus far. I haven't gotten anything from them before. A little bit skeptical of the quality, but I am probably going to get these ones just to see what I think about the quality of their appointed decks. The medieval playing cards, gold and royal editions by elephant playing cards are funded. $45 to go. I am not a fan of the price of the royal edition. I get it's got foil on the back design and it's, I believe it's got gilding and a little Jerry's tuck case, but still, what is it? Like, how much was that one? How much was it again? 40 bucks Australian, 30 bucks US for a deck. Uh, that's rather pricey in my opinion. I, like I said, I get it's got foil on the cards and everything. They're being printed by WJPC, which means it's going to be cheap for them to print them, which means they are overcharging you quite a bit. And also, being that it's being printed by WJPC, and it's got all this foil and gilding, I'm concerned about how they're going to handle. WJPC can't print decent quality decks, but when you start adding in foil and gilding on the cards, I don't know, it might not handle so good. Um, and the price might be worth it if it was being printed by, you know, Expert or Legends or USVC. But for WJPC, it sounds like they are quite overcharging you. I do have the previous medieval deck, which was originally called the Renaissance deck, for the launched it as the medieval deck. Uh, it's basically the same artwork. They've added color this time around to the faces and was the foil on some of the decks. On the one deck, the Royal Edison. I do like the Tuckus on the Royal Edison, but that's about it. Um, hard pass for me for now. Kayla Vala Point Guards by Sinise Chava, which I hope I pronounced correctly. Particularly, not Sinise's name, but the, the deck name, Kayla Vala. Hopefully that's correct. Funded 11 days to go. There is, of course, the red one is a limited edition with gilded edges, but the same faces. Um, Gods of Olympia playing cards by Graphite Designs is 50% funded 10 days to go. It just does not work for me. It lacks proper indexes, and the artwork is just not great. Kind of too minimalist. On the flip side, you got the Chow playing cards here by MPC. It is well funded, 30 days to go, and it looks beautiful. And that's what they should do with the Olympia decks. Um, moving on, Timber Point Cards by DW Cards. It's 39% funded, 23 days to go. Don't think it's going to happen. The back design is just not great. They also don't really sew you the back design all that well. I mean, you can see it. They sew it to you, but they don't actually specifically highlight the back design very well. And that's probably because it doesn't look so great. I'm also... Um, hmm, I see it's got this Kickstarter logo here. I don't know why that is. Did they put that in? Because I don't think 
Kick's going to put that in. Uh, I could be wrong, but also the faces, uh, these are uh, Lumberjack themed cards, so why do they have gold for the spades and the clubs? It makes no sense in my opinion. Uh, I don't know if the Gobs of Olympia is going to fund at this rate. I don't think so, and I don't think the timber playing cards are going to fund, but there's still time for both of them. Everyone was thinking it. I just said it. Dex wanted to by Weaving Whimsy slash Amy Weaver. One of the worst names I've ever heard for a deck of cards. It's an interesting I idea for a deck. It's not really my cup of tea. It is 46% from 12 days to go. It may or may not make it. Um, Cardillion Luxury Point Cards by Trick Landia is 18% funded, 17 days to go. It's not going to fund. There's no chance in hell. It's just way too high of a goal. What is it? $45,000, $50,000 goal? That's just ridiculous and absurd. I don't know why he bothered to set such a goal. I don't know how he came up with such a goal. But by the way, let me just say this. The previous project they did, the Tricklandia did, was pretty much a blatant ripoff of the first Mint decks. This one almost seems like a ripoff of the Mint 2 point guards. That's not cool. Come up with your own original concepts and color schemes. Stop ripping, up, ripping off other creatives, in my opinion. Hard pass on that one. Sensu Hanafuda uh, Poker Point Guards. There's a, well, there's a poker deck, and there's also a Hanafuda deck. But Indian Wolf Studios is 92% funded for this. So it's just a matter of time it should fund. Um, I like it, but not enough to get it uh, again. Uh, I mean, I got the previous version. I think that's enough. Back design in this one's pretty nice. Faces are fairly similar. Um, I just, I think one is enough for me. I got it previously because I wanted a deck that had kind of a hand of food of theme to it. Because I didn't have a hand of food of deck. Uh, and uh, so I did. But I think that's enough. Alright, on to new stuff. There's a lot going on. Mardi Gras. Uh, Masquerade Point Guards, the Mardi Gras edition by Brain Vessel Creative, is funded 12 days to go. Much lower goal than before. It's a beautiful, colorful version of their previous Masquerade Point Guards. I do like color. I like it when decks pop and are colorful and are fun. This one certainly is. It's very unique. Very interesting design and original. Definitely worth checking out. Also, if you missed out on the previous variation, and I think this is my review here, actually. <laughs> I hope so. Um... If you missed out on the previous variation, you can get the Black Monks edition right here. These are designed by uh, Denise Klett. Moving on, we got Geometric Plane Cars by Dan. Dan somebody. 45% funded, 26 days to go. Pretty low goal. Not extremely low like some graders, but it's pretty low. $3,000 US, I believe that is. I don't know who's producing it. I haven't seen information on that. It is, it does say it's a unique set of playing cards. I agree with that. It's typographic and geometric. As you can see, he's made the pips actually three dimensional, which is, again, like I said, unique. It's interesting. It's different. 15 bucks though for a deck of cards. Eh. I don't know. And then you see the faces. Again, I got the three-dimensional thing going on. He spells out the value in three-dimensional, or he puts pips on the cards three-dimensionally, but not in the indexes. The indexes are not. I'm also wondering why it is... Okay, I see here we got an ace of clubs, which is kind of a grayish color, but then you got a jack of clubs in a greenish color. Queen of Diamonds is in a bluish color. Um, make them all the same color, I think, is what I would say. Um, they write out, as you can see, they write out the value on the cards, as well as you get a fairly standard index. And then the pips are all three-dimensional. For the court cards, they write out King, Queen, or Jack three-dimensionally. And they got a color that matches the suit color. Um, it's an interesting deck. I don't know if it's 
it's not my cup of tea. I don't know if it's, you know, put together well enough. But it's an interesting idea. This is the back design. It just says playing cards with the four pips. They put playing cards in mirror image, but the pips are all one way. And it just seems like it lacks a lot, and it's very blank. They should have made the pips on either side of playing cards, at the very least, and made it reversible. But then again, the faces aren't reversible. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> it defeats the purpose. It doesn't say on the top case who is printing them. Just the visitor site, I guess. You got some nerdy details. Like I said, it's interesting. It's a, an interesting idea. It's well designed. We haven't seen. I haven't seen any decks where they make their pips three dimensional. I just wish that was the case for the indexes that they were a little bit bigger and three dimensional to match the, the rest of the cards. Um, but the implementation is just not my cup of tea, and I don't know who's producing it. It seems rather expensive for what it is. I don't mind the typographic deck when it's done right. I'm just not going to not interested in this. Oh, okay, it says here to be producing them from makeplaincards.com, so that's fine. Next, we got Vice Playing Cards, which is obviously Miami inspired, <laughs> by Jared Hall. It is 78% fun to 28 days to go. All the cards have hit this deck, apparently. Um, The back design is okay, aside from it being a one-way. It is going to be printed by USB-C on a B crust B stock and air custom finish. There's your back design. It's a one-way because of this center circle and the color scheme within it, the lines within it. Uh, the faces are standard, just recolored, as you can see. And it is what it is. The box is, eh, it's okay. Apparently, there is a thousand being produced. Minimalist, uh, making it reminiscent of old VHS tapes, which I agree. I, I mean, I have VHS tapes still kicking around. They have some similar artwork. Being printed by USB-C, a crust B stock, I think I mentioned that. And shipped by gamblers, yay, I'm not a huge fan of gamblers shipping. Um, it's an okay deck, if anything, I would probably get it later on, but I think I'll pass. Master Series Dark Lords by DeVoe is funded, very well funded, for over $30,000, seven days to go. I'm not one of those $30,000. Like I said, if anything, a deck like this, I would just get it later on. Um, this is basically, it's only a 14-day project. They've been putting on lots of projects, but they're all very similar. It's got foil on the tuck case and in Boston, you can see right here, it looks very nice. Like Jerry's tuck case, very well done. Foil on the inside as well. Um, very nice coin. <laughs> and then you get to the cards. To me, uh, from what I can tell, it looks the same, the back design-wise, as the previous variation. The only difference being that the previous variation, I believe, had white color on the faces. This is black. I could be wrong, but I believe it's the same, it's the same thing as the previous Lord's deck, except that this one has dark faces. And possibly more darkness on the Back design. Overall, it's not bad. It's one that, if anything, I'll just pick up later on. It's it's not a bad deck. Moving on, because we have a lot to talk about. We've got... Zortes Limited Edition by Newt Games. It is back. I thought Newt Games had started a new account, but I guess I was wrong. It is 35% funded, 22 days to go, whether or not it funds. I don't know. Um, I don't know if they mentioned who's producing this. It's a pretty low goal, sixteen hundred bucks US. The back design is okay. It's not a bad back design. Uh, I mean, the number cards aren't bad. The aces aren't bad. The court cards are a little bit cartoony. 
and a little bit slim, like they could fill up more space, I think. It's four jokers, which is nice. I do think they could have done without these gears and chains on the faces. And or shrunk the indexes and just made the court guard image a bit bigger, in my opinion. I do like the aces, for the most part, and the number of cards. The jokers, uh, I say they got two that look one way and two that look a different way. They're a little bit goofy, cartoony. But it is what it is. Actually, now I think of it, um, it says the art book was drawn, initially hand-drawn by their daughter, Rachel. I don't know how old she is. She's 10, it's great. If she's 20, it's not so great. <laughs> um, I, really, I really don't know. Um, but it's an interesting deck. Don't know who's producing it. Probably some no-name company, so the quality is not going to be too great. It says here, actually, one of the regular manufacturers in China, whoever that is, it's nameless, 300 GSM, 10 PT stock, black core, uh, Matt Lynn Finnis. Is it Matt or is it Lynn? Like, I don't think it could be Matt and Lynn. And, um, Shrink Crupper around the tuck case. That's, that's great. Just get the tuck case is going to be shrink wrap. That's always important to, to note. Moving on, Raven Soul and Money from Raven Magic has funded, well funded already, 24 days to go. Make sure you check it out. It is, of course, blue and orange versions of the Raven playing cards. Beautiful top cases. There's also this nice dual case, which is available for the, with the early bird, which I did get. It was available for 24 hours, so if you missed out, that's unfortunate. I do appreciate that. I appreciate that so much, because so often you get creators that launch a deck, and they put a early bird out with, you know, 20 early birds or whatever, by the time you get there, it's already sold out. And it's like, you know, that's not even fair. It's not even cool in my opinion. Because it allows only people who get there early or who have super fast computers to get their hands on them and everyone else gets left out in the cold. So I appreciate it when a creator does an early bird that lasts, you know, for 24 hours or whatever. That gives everyone a reasonable chance to get their hands on. I think that's the only fair way to do it. Uh, it's a nice dual tuck case, beautiful cards. It says here they're being printed on a Chainbreak 310 GR Black Core with a 9C2 varnish. Must be a new stock and finish by Carter Munday. Apparently they used it though, excuse me, for their Purple Haze deck last year. But it's not the B9 finish. It's interesting, it's a different finish. There's some gaff cards. I like the colors. <laughs> the jokers and everything. And they have improved the faces a little bit apparently. But they're still fairly traditional looking. So they're perfect for magic. And what not. There's going to be foil. Very nice. Definitely worth checking out. Um, so make sure you do. Then we got Metropol Next playing cards. The next deck, literally, it says next deck by Michael Lambert. 50% funded, 24 days to go. I believe it's this one that has free worldwide shipping. Okay, never mind. Free shipping to US and Canada. Still a thumbs up for that. I appreciate it. I think it's because he's in Canada, so he's going to ship out the Canadians himself. Most of the time, it's free shipping to the U.S. Everyone else, suck it. But this one, it's free shipping to the U.S. and Canada. There are projects that are free worldwide shipping. Not very often, though. So, appreciate it. 14 bucks U.S. for a deck. That's not bad. $18 Canadian. So, I also like it when I go to pricing Canadian. I just wish our Canadian dollar was a lot more friendly to these American projects. Anyways, this is the Metropol Next playing cards. It should fund, I would think. It's an interesting back design. A nice tough case. 
The faces, each suit has its own unique color. It reminds me a little bit of a recent deck by Vanda, which I forget the name. But spades are in black, blue is color for clubs, green for diamonds, and red for hearts. Minimalist cord cards, which is kind of just a very stylistic crown, if you will. And nice aces. They're being printed by expert playing cards. With a classic finish. I'm not sure why they're printing with expert as opposed to legends this time. I did pose the question in the comment section. Let's see if there was a response. Drum roll. And that's it. There's no response as of yet. Moving on, though, we've got Red Roses playing cards from Daniel Snyder. It is funded 29 days to go. I like the color red. It looks nice. I'm surprised he hasn't done a blue deck yet. Originally, this was put out as black deck. And then more recently, he had a green variation. I guess blue doesn't really work anyway, but maybe. Um, but now he's got this one. Fortunately, he's not calling it Black Roses again, like he did with the previous two versions. So Red Roses. It's one that I will pick up later on. I am a fan of the back design. It's nice, simple, but a beautiful back design. Uh, simple Ace of Spades. It has stretch goals for crust stock and traditional cut. At 7,500 euros, which they have surpassed. No, they have not. At 4,800 euros. See that currency? 6,300 euros currently pledged. That's $9,600 Canadian. Yeah. That's why I'm not backing it. I can just get it later on from Murphy's Magic at a nice price. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Um, the cards, fairly standard number of cards. The court cards, they're modified standard court cards with modified faces of his friends for the most part. It seems there's one or two court cards that don't have modified faces. What? You didn't have two more friends? <laughs> um, and then the jokers are just roses. Very simple. It's a nice deck. I do like the color scheme. Ooh, you can get a poker chip for five euros. Or you can get it free if you get six decks or more. Close-up mat. Yeah, not at these prices. <laughs> um, what is this? Different poker chips. Also, there is a stretch gold. This is nice. A limited gold metallic ink edition in white and gold at 10,000 euros if they get that. Same price though, apparently, as just getting two decks. So that's not bad. Shipping is... Wow. You have to pay four euros to ship to the US. I'm surprised. Shipped out by Yumi. I'm not familiar with Yumi, playing card company. Hmm. Anyways, um, that is that one. It's not bad. I do like it. You might want to check it out if you think the price is reasonable. Next, we got the sexiest U.S. military deck of cards by U.S. Mil Pin, which stands for short for U.S. Military Pinups. It's 28% funded, 26 days to go. Um, as far as the sexiest uh, part is concerned, I'm not sure. $16,000 gold seems rather high. I don't think it's going to fund. Um, they're okay. I would consider them sexy if they were actual models as opposed to cartoon images. But they're okay for what they are. Each suit seems to have its own theme. Hearts are Navy and Coast Guards, Diamonds and Marines, Spades are Army. These are the Jokers. They don't list what the clubs are, for some reason. They also don't show you the back design, which is a bit of a turnoff. Actually, no, sorry, they do show you the back design. I'm an idiot. The back design is still a turnoff. It's a one way for some reason because it is center element. Um, and also, the guns aren't all mirror imaged particularly these two machine guns. Not a fan of it. It just seems like it's 
sawing off weapons too much. And lots of bullets. It's just, if this is supposed to be about pinups, why not put some chicks on there? Um, there you see the faces. They're not bad in number cards. Not sure who's producing them. It's 15 bucks, I believe, US for a deck. 13 bucks, sorry. Uh, retail value is 15 bucks, though. I would have to say no. Also, I noticed, I don't know if you noticed there, but if you pledge for two decks, instead of being 13 bucks, it's 26 bucks. Uh, instead of, you know, uh, if you pledge for two decks, it's still $13 each. Three decks is pretty dollars. Basically, they have not given you a discount for pledging for more decks. That is not how you should do it. Nearly every Kickstarter project will, you know, charge you less money for buying multiple decks. So in this case, you know, two decks might be twenty-four bucks or twenty-five bucks, not twenty-six. Three decks would probably be thirty-six bucks as opposed to thirty-nine, etc., etc. So that's kind of a turnoff for some backers, I'm sure. Um, next up, we've got the Anonym, other side of playing cards by Card Rebels. 24% funded, 21 days to go. Now we got a lot to talk about, so let me sit up here. Uh, this is a weird deck of cards that I'm not a fan of myself. It's a pretty big goal, 21,000 Canadian, so what is that, 18,000 US or so maybe? Maybe a little bit less. The idea with this back with this deck, I should say, is that the court cards are showing you the back of their heads. So basically, they've redesigned the standard court cards, showing you their hair. How original and creative! Wow. There's your top cases. They're okay. Believe they're being printed by the USB-C. Um, there is a stretch goal for the classic deck, which will be classic faces. Royal Red and Imperial Blue Bats, which just say Anonym uh, throughout them. Not very exciting or creative. The stretch goal is $30,000 US. I don't even think they're going to fund, never mind hit the stretch goal. Oh wow, there's a free custom seal upgrade for every deck. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> $50,000 for a second stretch goal, US. Apparently everyone pledging for four more decks will receive their choice of one color of the classic decks. Absolutely free. That's great. So I guess, oh, okay, the $30,000 stretch goal is the seal. $50,000 stretch goal is the classic deck. There's no chance they're going to hit these stretch goals, in my opinion. They're being printed, who are they even being printed by? Yes, USB-C, that's what I thought. Fulfilled by Gamblers, and I guess Quartermaster Logistics in Europe, I suppose that is. Um, yes, European rewards will ship directly from Europe, so that's good. It's about the only good thing about the project. <laughs> um, it's, it's an interesting project, not really my cup of tea, the back design's not that great, and who really cares about the back of the Joker, of the, of the court cards? Who wants to see their heads? It just makes no sense. Also, shouldn't the bodies be a little bit different? <laughs> Oh, I'll be right back. Oh, it's going to be an extremely long video. I do apologize if it is very long. That's why I'm doing two. Hopefully, we'll get through this very quickly. Next up, we got the Moon Phases Flipbook Edition. By Perpetual Arts and Design Company, printed by USPC, it is 62% for the 28 days to go. Definitely worth checking out, although 
Um, it is a first product from the creator, so you have to be aware a little bit. However, they have put a lot of effort into this, and I don't think they're out to screw anyone over. Um, it's a very interesting deck. There you see the back design, sort of. <laughs> very interesting custom pips, very well done. And this is the whole thing. It's a flip book, so it's an animated back design. Every back design is going to be a little bit different. You flip through it, you get moon phases. It's a very interesting creative idea. Very nice. You see here a different one. And yes, I am a backer. And you also see it when you look at that. Just something like that. It's very nicely done. Beautiful, interesting court cards that are modified, obviously, from standard court cards, but quite a bit. They're custom, essentially, because they got so many modifications. Printed by USB C, it's going to look great. It's going to handle great. Eh, the Ace of Spades is a little bit weird, but it's fine. Uh, very well thought out. A plus for effort and creativity. 100% worth checking out. It's basically a completely custom court card. Very well designed. Apologize if I'm going through a little bit fast, but if you want to check it out or see better, definitely check it out. It's definitely worth it. Nice tough case. I like it. I, I think it's worth checking out. It's going to fund. It's just a matter of time, I'm sure. Um, oh, there's a reveal in there. That's cool. Very nice. The Crater of the Moon. Uncut Sheet. Some tutorials for cardistry. It's magic friendly. Yay. Uh, moving on. Uh, first edition. Year 3000 point cards by Card Kraken, aka Dylan Prescott, I guess. Funded five days to go. I'm not really a fan of this creator. He always seems to charge way too much for his decks of cards. He's had complaints about the quality of this product, which will quantify MPC usually. Uh, it's an interesting back design. Although it reminds, it reminds me of some marked decks. Um, not sure if it is actually marked in this case. Free worldwide shipping though. 75 bucks US for a deck of cards? Are you fucking crazy? Who the hell is pledging for this? Freaking idiots. There was an early bird at $37. That's even way too expensive. Wow. Only 30 backers so far. Big suck. Wow. No. I would never pay that much money for this deck of cards. Ever. That's just a ripoff. I don't know why people are pledging for, for these decks at these prices. That's ridiculous. Wow. Moving on. Let's forget about that one. We got the wonderful Wizard of Oz Illustrated Point Cards by John Mazuka. 8% funded, 34 days to go. <sighs> we got, wow, we're on the last couple of projects here. This is, I would say it's a very nice deck of cards. There's a couple minor issues that I've messaged the creator about. Um, it's nice artwork. Wizard of Oz themed. I'm not sure it's going to fund it this way, but there is time for them to catch up and fund. Part of the reason why it's not funding better, I think, is that they don't sell you the back design. It's going to be printed by USPC and a B stock. Obviously, an air custom finish. Very nicely designed, very artistic. Uh, very nice art. There's two decks. There's a variant deck as well. So it looks like there's one that's colored and one that's not colored. But it's basically the same artwork. The one deck has green colors, the other one has black colors. Like I said, they don't show you the back design anyway, which is a turn off for many backers, I'm sure. Also, I have not really seen this promoted anywhere, so that kind of hurts. And then the other thing is the indexes. In my opinion, the indexes are in the wrong corner. It's great if you're going for a lefty deck, and maybe that's part of the charm 
Uh, maybe that has something to do with, you know, Wizard of Oz. Um, but personally, I would prefer if the indexes were on the other side where they're supposed to be because most people are not left-handed. I know some people are, but the majority of people are not, and it would be much better for them if the indexes were on this right side or if there were simply four indexes to satisfy everyone's needs. Uh, so, yeah, the indexes... In the wrong corner, not showing the back design, those are the biggest things hurting the project, in my opinion. Hopefully, that gets corrected. I do wish this created the best of luck. He has put in some effort. I like it. It's well designed. It's not everyone's cup of tea. It might be better if there were more traditional court cards. And actually, I just noticed another thing for me that's a bit of a turnoff is every card is an image. I would prefer if it was just the court cards that were images and the number cards are a little more traditional. But it's not the end of the world. A for effort, though. And next, you got Mono X Point Guards by Luke Waddy with a monochrome color scheme. Printed by USB-C. 91% funded, 22 days to go. This one is funded, of course. Um, it is an interesting deck. Not a huge fan of the color scheme, I would say. 2500 being printed. There are some stretch goals for a limited edition, traditional cuts, upgraded tuck boxes, etc. etc. It's an interesting, you know, color scheme and bad design, but I'm not sure. Not to mention it's borderless. And then the faces, they're black and gray. Personally, if you're doing it, I think if a Cardis would prefer a deck that pops a little bit more. It has color. It's an okay deck of cards. Modified court cards, as you can see. Um, yeah, free foam background. Wonderful. It's it's okay. It's doing well. Not a fan of those t-shirts, per se. It is, however, the nicest deck that Luke Waddy has put out. He previously put out the grid series decks and some other typographic stuff. Not too many decks he's done that were successful, but this one is out there. Eight pounds for a deck. Um, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. It's not horrible. There, there is one more actually that I need to look at. I need to search for it, or because. It, I have to search for it because it doesn't show up under pointing cards for some reason. And I always miss it. It's the Fall of Angels by Ace Collectible Cards. 86% funded. 14 days to go. Still have not shown the back design. It should fund in a matter of time, I would say. But who knows? It's very interesting done. It's all about angels and demons. There's a limited edition deck as well. Um, I do feel the indexes could be better if they were closer to the edge. Like that, it looks like there's really big white borders on the faces. But it's an interesting deck. It's well done. That is that for Kickstarter. A lot of stuff to talk about. There's lots of stuff to talk about outside Kickstarter. So stay tuned for the next video. Comment, rate, subscribe. I apologize. This is so long. But there's just so much going on in Kickstarter this week. See ya next time with more. Hopefully with a lot less, actually.